prince of a thief. Listen, hearken, gentlemen that be of freeborn blood. I shall tell you of a good yeoman. His name was Robin Hood. Good evening. I'm Pierce Brosnan. He is a legend that goes by many names. The Earl of Huntington, Robin of Loxley, Robert Fitzsooth, and Robert Hood. But to centuries of storytellers, he is simply Robin Hood. Who was this outlaw? Did he actually exist? Was he real or just a medieval myth carried on for 800 years? It is a question that scholars still debate today. And for the next hour, we will explore the myth of the hooded man. Was he fact or fiction? Tonight, we will find out. Tonight, journey back in time through historic England to unravel the mystery behind the legend of Robin Hood. I do believe that Robin Hood existed, and that I am related to Robin Hood. May I ask you to readdress me as sheriff, please? I'm very wanted to see Robin Hood's grave. Who was Maid Marian? Is this the grave of Little John? And is this recently discovered 700-year-old document the final proof that Robin Hood was real? willing to fight for our people, I want you. Are you with me? I am Robin Hood. We live the legend of Robin Hood through the eyes of Hollywood. Hood, the camera's over here. Go on location behind the scenes of the most anticipated movie of the year. The stars, the filmmakers, an exclusive look at the making of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Ah! And finally, meet Hollywood's hottest leading man, Kevin Costner. He's just one of those actors that grabs you, you know, you like him. I would just give him a ten. This actor-director's last movie, Dances with Wolves, won seven Oscars, and now he tackles his most challenging role yet. Well, I hope I don't bring a whole end to the legend. That's what I'm like hoping. special presentation of Robin Hood, the myth, the man, the movie, is brought to you by Choice Hotels International. Reserve a room at any Choice Hotel, like quality, comfort, clarion, and sleep, and get this fabulous coupon book absolutely free. Ooh. You'll save at places like Alamo Rent-A-Car, Red Lobster, and Theme Parks, a value of over $1,000. Yeah! So call for your coupon book today. Bye-bye. Vanna White not included. Oh. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room and free coupon book. Supplies are limited. Say, kids, what time is it? It's kids' day free time at Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep Hotels. Huh? Kids 18 and under stay free at Choice Hotels when you call 1-800-4-CHOICE and reserve a room. You know, people say to me, Sonny, you're rich, handsome, and talented, and I say, oh, contraire, I'm not rich. <laughs> That's why I got the new coupon book available from any Choice Hotel like Econo Lodge, Roadway, and Friendship. It could save you over $1,000 at places like Pizza Hut, Alamo Rent-A-Car, and Theme Park. Call now, because they've got yours, babe. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room and free coupon book. Supplies are limited. Looking for a good time in the morning? If sex were fast food, there'd be an arch over your bed. Then we've got designs on you. Designing women in the morning, weekdays on CBS. An unseen psychopath has invaded her life. He's after me, my friends, my mother, my son. Jill Clayburgh stars. Oh, oh. Fierce Talk, Friday. 
Sunday, it's Jessica and Rosie, so get ready to solve the unsolvable. Far be it from me to ask you to snoop. And defend the controversial. I just don't buy vigilanteism as a defense. Angela Lansbury. You found him for us. And Sharon Bless. I believe in the law. Jessica and Rosie are back to back. Murder, She Wrote, and an all-new Rosie O'Neill Sunday. Fly by night tonight on CBS Late Night. It's too hot to sleep. I know I caught a Robin Hood really early in my life. I was really taken with it. Who is that? Come on! Come on! He's a larger-than-life character. I mean, there's even some question as to whether or not he really existed. If he was just something that people created because they needed a hero. You know, a guy who's witty and he's talented and he's strong and he comes from sort of the upper classes, but he, he supports the underdog. And he does everything right. And uh, that's what most heroes are like. It's one of the most famous legends in the world. You know, they say there's seven basic stories, and I don't know what the other six are, but I'm sure one of them is Robin Hood. I'm going to be the world's first four-legged Robin Hood. Robin. You're an imposter. Who's going to be Robin Hood? I make a pretty good Robin Hood. The merry man of Sherwood Forest. It's me, Meg Marion. Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Robin Hood. You're not Robin of Luxury. Robin Hood. That's ridiculous. Other legendary figures like King Arthur, William Tell, and even Jesse James have become part of our modern culture, but none with the romantic flair of Robin Hood and his band of merry men from Sherwood Forest. He robbed the rich to feed the poor, waged war against corruption and injustice, and won the heart of the fair Lady Marion. <laughs> and when it came to bows and arrows, it is said that Robin was the best in all of England. He could pinpoint a target at 300 yards and hit it dead center. And when he was just 15 winters old, he fought 15 men in a ferocious battle and killed them single-handed. What do you expect? After all, he is a legend. He's a legend in England. He stole from the rich and gave to the poor. I wish there was one about today, I really do. <laughs> well, it's the Sherwood Forest. Oh, we've always lived in this area and we've been brought up with it and all the stories about him and uh, I'm sure it must be true. It must have been uh, pretty interesting, I guess if you if you can imagine what this place was like a thousand years ago. I mean, the forest would be right up to the walls of the castle here, and you could see nothing but trees and forests for, for, for just thousands of miles around, hundreds of miles around. A bronze statue in Nottingham, England, stands as a tribute to a real man. Or just a myth. We do know that 800 years ago, another forest needed to be saved, and a legend was born. The story begins when a wealthy nobleman was murdered in Nottingham, a city ripe with crime and corruption. His son adopted a secret identity and vowed to avenge his father's death. He gathered a few loyal friends to fight against the wicked forces which ruled England at the time. Operating from a secluded hideaway, they would appear out of nowhere to help innocent victims of injustice. Where was King Richard? He was away at the Crusades. Well, that's the familiar tale, but is it true? Was Robin Hood himself real? Most historians agree that the story of Robin Hood is based in truth, but the tale is a fascinating blend of fact and fiction. James Holt is a retired Cambridge University professor and the world's leading authority on Robin Hood. He studied the legend of the hooded man for 30 years. The first reference to Robin Hood comes from the year 1262. And in that first reference, there's no real doubt about it, 
Robin Hood was used as a criminal alias or nickname. In other words, the name was imposed on a known criminal. This court document from either the years 1261 or 1262 was discovered just a few years ago. One of the outlaws listed is named Robin Hood. But during the next 40 years, court records throughout England mentioned at least a dozen more rebels with the same name. What that tells you is that already by 1261, the term he's a Robin Hood is being used to describe an outlaw, like he's a hood in the States. And he's a hood in the States comes from it, of course, it's based on the Robin Hood legend. The legend of an English hood may have started even earlier with the exploits of a tenant farmer turned outlaw, Robert Hood, mentioned in this record of the Court of York on July 25th, 1225. The name reappeared the following year as Hobby Hood, and soon after as Gilbert Robbie Hood. So if Robin Hood really lived, he must have lived long enough before 1261 for his stories to be in circulation. And the legends and the stories that uh, develop from that time are perhaps an, an amalgamation of uh, several of these characters who received the nickname Robin Hood simply because they were outlaws. Well, it all started as a result of the taxes imposed by the sheriff of Nottingham, I believe, wasn't it? Ooh. I mean, I tend to be a bit of a romantic, so I think, yeah, he's going to be dashing, nice clothes, you know, <laughs> a really nice character that everybody looks up to. He used to come in here with Maid Marian and sit by the fire and have a beer, you know, and uh, the sheriff of Nottingham, of course, he, he got himself in a fight here one day, so rumour has it, and he was banned from, from the inn uh, and told never to come back again, so Robin Hood was quite safe here with Maid Marian. This all really happened. Storytelling in Nottingham continues even today. In the 12th century, it was the primary means of communication. And long before the invention of the printing press, traveling minstrels spread the news through their ballads and stories. Basically, somewhere between information being passed between villages and people who are good at storytelling adding to that information to turn it into stories, that's where the Robin Hood legend began. Stole from the witching games of the war. That was what it was about, wasn't it? That doesn't enter into the legend until 200 years after we first have knowledge of it. In the 15th century, the May Day Festival was carnival time in England. Young people dressed up as two fantasy figures, Robin Hood and Maid Marian, the King and Queen of May. Robin and Marian pressured the folks to give money to the church. These collections led people to later say that Robin Hood took from the rich to give to the poor. She was really pretty and she was in love with Robin Hood. Maid Marian first appeared in the late 15th century at the May Festival. The outlaws' devotion to this spirited young maiden made their love story one that would last through the ages. She vows chastity until they become married and therefore she takes the name Maid Marian. It is said that Robin's closest friend, Little John, lies buried in a 14-foot-long grave dating back to medieval times. When exhumed in 1784, all that remained was an extremely large human thigh bone. Today in Sherwood Forest, the last remaining physical link to the legend of Robin Hood is a giant oak tree, said to be Robin's actual gathering place. In Nottingham, a few special citizens keep the spirit and the legend alive in their own unique way. I do believe that Robin Hood existed, and that I am related to Robin Hood. May I ask you to address me as Sheriff, please? That's my title, if you don't mind. Many experts claim to have seen the grave, but I'm the only one that has seen Robin Hood's grave. He's a symbol, again, of right and wrong, so that will keep him alive, I think. Now, it may be fiction, uh, it may be escapism, but he's always going to be with us, and it's none the worse for what it is. He started writing the ballads, then they were turned into prose, then they became plays, then they became silent movies. Then, you know, each generation would add to it. At the turn of this century, cinema was a new phenomenon. Even then, filmmakers were looking for a blockbuster film to bring people to see their product. What better idea than Robin Hood? Now, many people think that the first Robin Hood was the 1922 version starring Douglas Fairbanks. In fact, there were five silent Robin films prior to Fairbanks. Three were British films, and two were from Hollywood. 
This is the very first American film ever made about Robin Hood. Thanks to a film collector from Cutterhay, Wisconsin, this is also the first time the 1912 silent film has been shown on television. Simply titled Robin Hood, the movie was shot in New York and starred Robert Frazier as Robin and Barbara Kenneth as our first Maid Marian. films, Robin was not so easily fooled by such elaborate disguises. In 1922, with a magnificently built full-scale castle, Douglas Fairbanks, the king of the swashbucklers, wrote, produced, paid for, and starred in one of the greatest film epics of the silent era, Robin Hood. At first, Fairbanks would have nothing to do with the outlaw from Sherwood Forest. I'm not going to play a flat-footed Englishman walking through the woods, he said. Well, he was convinced otherwise. And in 1922, Robin Hood became the most expensive film in history and Fairbanks' most successful movie, rubber swords and all. Fairbanks' son often shared the filmmaking experience with his father. I just remember being thrilled with the big sets, because in those days, they were the biggest sets ever built for a motion picture. Fairbanks was famous for performing his own exhilarating stunts. This one, aided by a trampoline. I was his biggest fan. I loved the whole thing. I think as a boy, I saw it so many times, so I just loved it. Okay, but uh, weren't you a little embarrassed seeing your dad in those tights? <laughs> no, I'd seen him do Three Musketeers. Douglas Fairbanks Sr. made Robin Hood a hero. A 29-year-old Australian actor soon made him a star. This is a theatrical trailer for the 1938 swashbuckling romance The Adventures of Robin Hood, starring the Saturday matinee idol, Errol Flynn. England! In the gallant days when history hung on the flight of an arrow or the slash of a sword. When feudal barons ravaged the countryside to live in pomp and splendor. When one man alone dared challenge the might of his country's oppressors. Robin Hood, outlaw of Sherwood Forest and his stalwart band. He's so good in that movie, and the movie is so hokey. <laughs> in, 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 a lot of, in a lot of ways. they has got this great entrance where he comes into this gigantic hall where they've been discussing if they ever see this guy, they're going to kill him. He's got this gigantic stag on his shoulders, this deer. And he, like, comes into this hallway where these people have been threatening to kill him. He throws the deer down at the feet of them and, and declares that he's Robin Hood and has dinner with them. You know, it's like a really bold entrance. <laughs> of your royal brother, King Richard. God bless him. By my faith, but you're a bold rascal. Robin, I like you. I'm gratified, Your Highness. <laughs> and, of course, when he battles his way out of the castle, it's at about 20 frames, so Errol looks incredibly quick. No, I watched them because, you know, you have, I have great admiration for those things that came before us. Roll cameras. Action. Here is a rare behind-the-scenes look at movie making in the 1930s. A college student was given special permission to shoot these home movies on location in Chico, California, which was doubling for Sherwood Forest. Hey, and here's Errol Flynn and Basil Rathbone at Warner Brothers Studio in Burbank performing their own stunt work during a climactic sword fight. Over the years, this legend became the basis of a wide array of different movies starring actors such as Cornell Wilde, John Derrick, Richard Todd, even John Cleese. 
Sean Connery played the aging outlaw in Robin and Marion, and his son, Jason Connery, was Robin of Sherwood for the British television series. This successful series presented a different kind of Robin, one based on the belief in the occult. Now, while this telling of the tale stayed true to the period, other Robin Hoods didn't. What do you say, Robbo? How are you? Frank Sinatra and his Rat Pack cronies fleeced the rich and gave to the poor in this musical spoof of the Prohibition days in Chicago. But spoofing Robin Hood had really begun 40 years earlier with a theatrical short by humorist Will Rogers. And ever since, it's been open season on the legend of Robin Hood. Hello there, Peabody here. And that's my boy Sherman over by the Wayback Machine. The Wayback's all warmed up, Mr. Peabody. Excellent, Sherman. Then set the indicator for the year 1180. 1180 it is. Our target for today will be Nottinghamshire, England. And in particular, Sherwood Forest, where we'll come face to face with that legendary rogue, Robin Hood. Action! <laughs> Stand back, you harlots. It is I, Robin Hood, ready to rescue yon peasant with my trusty bow and arrow. But the camera's over here. <laughs> Look no further, good friar, for I am he for whom thou seekest. I am Robin Hood. Oh, I can't uh, cut it out. I'm, I'm serious. If you don't know where he is, just say so. But honest and truly, I am Robin Hood. Sure you are. I don't know why I always have to be the bad guy. I'd like to be the good guy once in a while, I guess. <laughs> In 1955, English actor Richard Green starred in this CBS television series, which many fondly remember as their introduction to the legend of Robin Hood. Marion. Quickly, Robin, tie me up and bind me. But what about you? I can't All you. right. They'll never suspect me. Robin Hood will soon be here. He robs from the rich and he gives to the poor. Yo-ho, we go skipping troll out through Sherwood Forest, helping the needy and the oppressed. Eh, yeah, you've been saying that through the whole picture. Well, where is he? Oh, you should not talk mean like that, because there he is. Nah, that's silly. It couldn't be him. See, the C come before the A, B, C, D, so I get billing over Daffy Duck. Ready, John? When we return, we'll see firsthand how the newest Robin Hood epic, Prince of Thieves, was brought to the big screen. And Robin Hood, the myth, the man, and the movie returns from England. Reserve a room at any choice hotel, like quality, comfort, clarion, and sleep, and get this fabulous coupon book absolutely free. Ooh. You'll save at places like Alamo Rent-A-Car, Red Lobster, and theme parks, a value of over $1,000. Yeah! So, call for your coupon book today. Bye-bye. Vanna White not included. Oh. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room and free coupon book. Supplies are limited. <laughs> When Evil Knievel drops by Choice Hotels, like Econo Lodge, Roadway, or Friendship, he calls ahead for our 30% discount for seniors. And after a life like mine, that's about the biggest thrill I could take. Seniors save 30% by calling 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve a room. Rooms are limited, so call today. Here's one way to improve your marriage. Take your husband to a quality, comfort, clarion, or sleep hotel where the weekend rates start as low as $29 a night. Then put on your best nighty and dim the lights. That should get your husband very excited. Men just love to save money. 
To qualify for special weekend rates, call 1-800-4-CHOICE and reserve a room. At any Choice Hotel, like quality, comfort, clarion, and sleep, seniors can call ahead and get a 30% discount, no matter where they drop by. Boy, what I won't do to save a buck. Seniors save 30% by calling 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve a room. Rooms are limited. Call today. Robin Hood, the myth, the man. The movie will continue. She's pushing marriage, he's pushing 60. Something's gotta give. What's wrong with Grandpa? What always happens when older men play with younger women. Norman Lear's Sunday dinner. Colt will come to order. The bullet went through his head and left. Please state your name and address. For I that. didn't load the gun. Why don't you just lie to the jury and say that he's never done anything violent? Don't let him con you. We who seek the truth. We the jury in the above entitled cause find the defendant. Verdict. Premieres June 21st at 8. This is CBS. And a red October. Now, the host of HBO's Tales from the Crypt sings HBO's great summer hits. Die Hard 2. Including the unforgettable Days of Thunder. I lost the blues watching Cruise. Act now and get over 140 movies every month with Cinemax. Call 784-8000 now and get a standard cable connection for $4.99. Plus, get two months of HBO or Cinemax for $5.95 per month. Call now. Now, news break from Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Tina Hicks. Tonight on Eyewitness News Update, six-year-old Taylor Ferguson, who was murdered last weekend, is laid to rest tonight. Funeral services for the little girl were held today. Meanwhile, the Chow's family members have sought legal counsel. Attorney Frank Chow says the medical examiner's report was way off concerning the Chow's being alive and with her mother and the Chow's time of death. Firefighters have ruled out arson and the death of 76-year-old Priscilla Floyd. Floyd perished in a blaze at her home on Lavinia Avenue. Investigators believe there was an electrical problem. Join us tonight at 11. Trial. Those stories and more on Eyewitness News at 11. Reverend Jesse Jackson and Backdraft Scott Glenn on the next Arsenio. Robin of Locksley. Welcome home, Robin. Lady Marion. Ah, there's Will Scarlett. There Welcome to Sherwood, Fryer. God, he made it for the priesthood. John Little. Little John. King Richard. You may kiss the bride. Locksley, my lord sheriff. I will never marry you. That's my wife, Crone. <laughs> Bringing Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, to the silver screen was just about as difficult as... Well, it was just about as difficult as Robin Hood's legendary fight with Little John to gain control of the band of merry men of Sherwood Forest. The props, the costumes, the weapons, all had to create a strikingly authentic 13th century England. Robin Hood. Prince of Thieves was shot on location throughout England, including historic grounds that have been protected since the time of William the Conqueror. The city of Nottingham was faithfully recreated on the back lots of Shepherd and Studios. undertaking was no small task. It took four months of grueling filming and an army of workers in merry old England that rivaled the once mighty Sheriff of Nottingham. To reproduce an accurate portrayal of 12th century England, including realistic clothing, Robin Hood's traditional costume became an unrealistic choice. You see pictures of Robin Hood and the Merry Men, and you know what I mean? <laughs> and the guys in the little tights and the green pixie shoes and the little hats with the feathers in them, you know, running around in the forest. Uh, not likely. And people assumed, for some bizarre reason, that he would be wearing tights in this movie. We'd have agents of actors um, expressing interest or disinterest in the movie based on how they thought their clients would look in tights. I was expecting to see a whole new direction on the Robin Hood costume, and I had just in the fitting room, on the fitting room floor, in there, a pair of green tights and a pointed hat with a feather. And I said, well, Kevin, 
And he looked at me and he said, well, John. I had just been told that this guy had a very good take on, on and a new take on how Robin should be. And so they all got a very good laugh out of, out of that. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to horrify him. And it honestly never occurred to any of the filmmakers for a single second to put our Robin Hood in tights. It just isn't that kind of movie. The clothes make the man. The filmmaker's goal was to create an authentic 13th century world, paying close attention to even the smallest of details. For instance, all the bows and arrows, well, they all had to be made to the actual sizes, which were five foot six inches, true to the period. Also, at that time, a full-grown cow would have been the same size as a Great Dane. <coughs> well, even though some of these uh, cows were only going to be in the background of a few of the shots, the filmmakers searched for weeks for, well, short cows. It was tough. There's no question. It was the hardest picture I've ever worked on. When you're shooting a sequence, one of the best feelings is when you watch something unfold before your eyes and you really get excited and into it and you see it working. I mean, that's why I do it. It's because those sort of ephemeral moments that are there and then they're suddenly gone and hopefully you've captured them on film. Go. When he fires, boom. He was making a film and, and uh, I wanted to come out here and help. Boom. First one back on him. Pulls the second one over his shoulder. Boom. We're lucky because when we work together, we can we can speak in a certain kind of shorthand that only comes with knowing someone. And it's great because we can just be completely open with each other and say, no, I don't like that. Or, uh, yeah, that's great. Boom. And then you turn here. Whack. And then he goes on up the hill. This isn't the first time the Kevins have worked together. Previously, they teamed up for Fandango, Costner's first leading role. Well, it's funny because I had actually known Kevin a couple years before we did Fandango. When I was doing a student film at USC, he came in and read for it. Yeah, and uh, it was between... It, the role was between he and another guy, and I cast the other guy. I'm not very good at this. Oh. Ah. How are we going to cook it? <laughs> Kevin's a real visionary and has a real force of will that's very attractive to me. It's magical and it's and it's fun and I find him really inventive and we kind of have the relationship that if, if he can think of it, I can do it. I'm proud of a lot of the work that we did. It was very grueling. It was very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say I'm proud of what we did. Cut. Flashing. Eight hey, away, take three. Hold on okay. Eight. Print all three, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. Two ten. Very high on the harp. E F A B. Ring. I need a, a G to D pickup as if you're in bar one ten. No, do it slowly. Do it. That's the one. That's the one. Robin Hood is is my hero. Has has always been my hero. I've desperately wanted to do the music to this. I, I mean, I, I guess most of my life I've walked around humming the music that has wound up in Robin Hood. You probably don't know his name, but you definitely know his music. Michael Kamen has composed musical scores for some of Hollywood's most successful films, among them Lethal Weapon and Die Hard. The music is the last ingredient that can help to extract the emotions from the characters. If they're falling in love, you gush for them, and, and if they're crying, you weep silently for them. And you, that's why it's called underscore. It's more like underlining an emotion. Here we go. Capturing the emotion required some dedicated musicians, 110 to be exact. Here, they are creating a romantic feel for a pivotal scene between Robin and Maid Marian. The basic theme is really simple, it's just... any more involved. 
of the man. I play it on this and then put it on score and turn it into, into musical instruments. It's big, it's full of heroics and power and real compassion. I've, I've carried an idea of, of who Robin Hood is in my mind since I was six, so that's a pretty strong vision to have musically. Let's go listen to it. So this is how I do it. They give me the picture with these bar of timings underneath it. That's how I know when I'm supposed to be in, when I'm supposed to stop, and when I'm supposed to hit something. The orchestra loves playing flat out for long periods of time. They'll play anything, but they love just running. It's like getting on a horse and galloping, so this is what it feels like for the, to us on the floor. There's this lovely episode where Maid Marian follows Robin Hood into his camp in the woods. He sees her off by the lake. And it's just about as beautiful as anything you can imagine. And Robin asks her for two favors. She says, yes, OK, I'll do the first one. And he said, I need you to get a message. Will you do this for the king? And she looks at him hard, and she goes, no. I'll do it for you. And we've been building it up pages and pages and pages of music and finally she kisses him and that's where the score turns black with notes and everybody goes <sighs> this is a, a, a work of love this has come from the heart. This is something that I really, really care about. Music is a, a real substance. It's, it's a very powerful substance. And uh, it's got to be taken seriously. I guess I was in love with Maid Marian, but just looking at Kevin Costner, giving her a big kiss and thinking, oh, oh man, that's as close as I'll get to her. I love that. is because his sword is so powerful. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's so big. I haven't got a lick in. When we return, we'll meet Hollywood's newest Robin Hood, swashbuckling Kevin Cosner, who shows a side to this hero that few have ever seen. <laughs> be too smart when you're traveling on business. So, grab a phone, call your travel agent, and you can stay at any of 2,500 choice hotels absolutely free. Would you believe over 20% off? Call your travel agent or 1-800-4-CHOICE to save over 20% with Choice Hotels' corporate rates. Say, kids, what time is it? It's kids. Huh? <laughs> Kids 18 and under stay free at Choice Hotels when you call 1-800-4-CHOICE and reserve a room. Before you get on the road this summer, call for this coupon book. It's worth over $1,000 at places like Red Lobster, Alamo Rent-A-Car, and Theme Parks. And it's yours free when you reserve a room at any Choice Hotel, like Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep. But call today! They're going fast! Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room and free coupon book. Supplies are limited. It's the surprise hit of summer, all in the family classics. You know you're right, Archie. The Irish are boozers, the Mexicans are bandits. And you Polacks are meatheads. Sunday. Monday, Corky gets a jump on Christmas. When the chips are down, I can shop as fast as anyone. Murphy Brown, Ben. When was your first time? Fifteen. That doesn't mean we don't have 
regrets. What are they? Evening shade. And see how it all began. Too much hunting, Joe? Just on the Lower East Side for bargains. Northern Exposure at the Ricky Brown and Evening Shade, Monday. Robin Hood! Prince of the Thief. Robin! The sheriff calls us outlaws. Steals money from my pocket. I fight with Robin Hood! Point me to old danger and leave. Lord bless me! Robin! My personal reason for doing Robin Hood was that genuinely inside me was a desire to create the myth of Robin Hood again as I believed it could have happened. This is your sort of the childhood dream of making movies is to make an action movie, you know what I mean? You know, sword fighting and shooting bows and arrows and riding horses and jumping fences and, you know, that's fun. If you would be free men, then you must fight! Join us now! Morgan Freeman portrays Robin's trusted friend, Azim, a wise warrior from North Africa. Join Robin Hood! It's his opinion, I saved his life, and, 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 and his religious beliefs are as such that... He dedicates his, his life to repaying that debt, the, the debt of life. Azim! Time to redeem that now! Well, he, he, of course, feigns uselessness, but he's always got an eye on me, and, and from his point of view, would not have let anything happen to me. Any great ideas? Get up! Move faster! Move faster. Great idea. I can't do this with all that... Ratchet. Alan Rickman portrays a truly evil sheriff of Nottingham who dabbles in murder and black magic. I, I'm not playing a villain. I'm just playing somebody who has a certain checklist of things that he wants in life, and he goes after them. And other people say, like Robin Hood decides, that's appalling and it must be stopped. I constantly wanted the sheriff of Nottingham to be something more than a... Uh, one-dimensional Darth Vader bad guy. He brings a lot of humor to the part, but a lot of wickedness at the same time, so that he's a lot of fun to watch. Ah, Cancel the kitchen scraps for lepers and orphans. No more merciful beheadings. And call off Christmas. There's a price on your head. How much? 100 gold pieces. Is that all? Soon it will be a thousand. For a thousand, I would turn you in myself. Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio plays a very independent Maid Marian. Well, she doesn't much like him. I don't think she much trusts any man anyway, so and there's no reason to, you know. <laughs> They've all gone off and left you. <laughs> so she's, uh, and they, little by little, I guess there's something about him that she kind of fancies. Yes! Beautiful shot! <laughs> and Christian Slater rounds out the cast as the mysterious Will Scarlet. We're not really like expert robbers, you know. Robin sort of teaches us the, 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 the skills that we, we, we haven't yet acquired, you know. Recognize this? I shall never fear my father's sword. I'd like to believe there was a guy like that, yeah. Uh, I don't know anybody that wouldn't. What is it that has allowed this character of Robin Hood? to exist for seven centuries. Well, for one thing, he stood up for the common man. He was fearless in battle, but yet he was a compassionate friend. He was a free-spirited adventurer, but had a pledge for only one woman. And yet, he was considered a rebel, with a cause. It can be said that Kevin Costner, the new Robin Hood, is also a rebel with a cause. <laughs> he bucked the Hollywood system, didn't he? fearless in battle, and made Dances with Wolves, a film given uh, not much chance of succeeding at the box office. Well, <laughs> seven Oscars later, Kevin is still a family man and has garnered huge popularity by his on-screen portrayals. Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. That voice just now, what was it? If you build it, he will come. Oh, yeah, nice. Come on, mate. My name's Ray Gonzalez. I believe in long, slow, deep, soft, wet kisses that last three days. I'll tell you exactly how I feel about prohibition. What's in it for me? Lieutenant John J. Dunbar. Drop the gun! Thank you. Well, there was 20 of us riding in the middle of this herd at full speed. And um, a horse got out of control and slammed into my horse and knocked me down. I just 
got up and Norman came over and he had my double horse there and I said, get off. And he did, you know, and I said, bridle that sucker up and he did. About two minutes later, we got a great shot out of him. He rode with the buffalo in Dances with Wolves. This is a story about an unusual actor who loves to do his own stunts. As long as he's doing the action, I think he's, uh, he's happy. And he wants to be up there amongst it. So you have to make sure that he's safe while he's doing it. But he has tremendous courage and uh, a great deal of the swashbuckling attitude that uh, Robin Hood needs. He's got it. I do a lot of bareback riding because I steal a horse. Sea having on a horse is, is, is great. I mean, he is a, such a brilliant rider. And we've thought up a couple of new inventions where I run over the backs of four standing horses, which is not easy, and then jump into the saddle of another one, or the sheriff's horse, actually, a white stallion, kick the man that's holding it and burst out of town, steal a bag of sack of things and swing it and knock a guy. But let's see, big music stuff. Okay, Kev. Yeah. Is the reason I haven't delivered a blow myself is because his sword is so powerful? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He's so big. I haven't got a lick in. Kevin had done most things before in his life, but uh, swords I don't think was one of them. And that's not even hard. Right. Well, it felt kind of silly because you guys had your camera on me, and I was thinking, geez, that's funny. Uh, People film me practicing. <laughs> People don't see the work behind what goes into the finished product, so you see all the clumsiness and all that stuff. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> the lady. <laughs> pick a slower man. Pick a, pick a, a smaller man. Uh, pick a dumber man and you usually can win. And action! Kevin is so right for the role, we never really questioned it for a second. If you see him with the bow and arrow in his arm, and you just know Kevin Costner is Robin Hood. It's the one of recognition whenever you think of Robin Hood. It's the, it's the weapon of choice, I guess. It's the one he's the most proficient at. And you fire one arrow like that, and then you take off down the hill looking right. over your shoulder and head that direction, okay. okay? Day two, and we were burning the village, and uh, Kevin was there, and he was showing me his new bow and his new outfit, and he was so proud of it. And I said, well, do you know how to shoot that thing? And uh, he said, sure. So he just pulls an arrow out of his quiver, and he turned around, and there was a rabbit hanging on a hut about, I don't know, it had to be 30 yards away, and I said, shoot that rabbit. So he turned around, and he just nonchalantly drilled this you know, stuffed rabbit from about 30 yards. I couldn't believe it. And uh, I said, we'll do it again. So he laughed and declined, just like that. Do you that. think you do anything like stylistic where you take three and go boom in the ground, go one, two, pull off the ground? Do you think you do anything that's yeah. very much like the Crusades, you realize what he's doing? Yeah. He just takes three out and goes, <clears throat> you know, and he takes one, boom. shooting the sequence between he and Little John where they battle in the river. Done a lot of things in my career, uh, none any harder than that. You can't really tell when you see the scene now, but that water was about 32 degrees. You're talking about 10 hours a day in the water. And we shot for four or five days. From the get-go, I fall in the water. Between takes, he was so cold that his hands would cramp up. It was really cold. <laughs> Background. Okay, now. Roll, please. 390, take four. Action. Oh, fuck. Never seen so much. Performing stunts as Hollywood's leading man has other pitfalls as well. I gotta kick him in the face. It's, you know, it's just, 
it's kind of strange, you know. You know, to sit there and go, hi, Kevin, how are you? Bap! You know, and then and they go running off. And... We have much to celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> if you wish to share the good Lord's brew, you must just be for it. Come on, Lord! What does it say? I get the <laughs> shit out of me. Yeah. 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 Even though Kevin Costner has struck Oscar gold and his career is exploding, he remains a man with a strength of character, not unlike the roles he chooses to portray. And he can pull it off. It's not like he'll stand there for the close-ups and then calls for the double, you know, for the difficult stuff, you know. He does it all, you know with a certain amount of panache. He's really good at what he does. I don't know. He's just one of those actors that grabs you, you know, you like him. I would just give him a 10. Well, I hope I don't bring a hole into the legend. That's what I'm like hoping. We'll have more of Robin Hood, the myth, the man, and the movie, when we return from Arundel Castle in England. Before you get on the road this summer, call for this coupon book. It's worth over $1,000 at places like Red Lobster, Alamo Rent-A-Car, and Theme Park. And it's yours free when you reserve a room at any choice hotel, like Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep. But call today! They're going fast! Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room and free coupon book. Supplies are limited. Any choice hotel like Quality, Comfort, Clarion, and Sleep, seniors can call ahead and get a 30% discount no matter where they drop by. Boy, what I won't do to save a buck. Seniors save 30% by calling 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve a room. Rooms are limited. Call today. You know, people say to me, Sonny, you're rich, handsome, and talented, and I say, oh, contraire, I'm not rich. <laughs> That's why I got the new coupon book available from any choice hotel like Econo Lodge, Roadway, and Friendship. It could save you over $1,000 in places like Pizza Hut, Alamo Rent-A-Car, and Theme Park. Call now, because they've got yours, babe. Call 1-800-4-CHOICE to reserve your room and free coupon book. Supplies are limited. When you call 1-800-4-CHOICE, you get more than a great room at any choice hotel. You can also... Bring the little buckaroos along for free at any choice hotel. Like Econo Lodge, Roadway, or Friendship. That's very smart. Excite your husband at any quality, comfort, clarion, or sleep hotel where weekend rates start at $29. I'm excited. I get a 30% senior discount just for staying alive this long. Would you believe corporate rates for more than 20% off? I can believe that. At more than 2,500 choice hotels worldwide. Unbelievable. So you could save a fortune. And after a life like mine, that's about the biggest thrill that I can take. But to get any of these deals, you've got to call. That's 1 800 4. C A O I C E. I'll say I've got yours, Dave. Hey, I thought that was my line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Bye-bye. To get your choice of great rooms and a great deal almost anywhere, call 1-800-4-CHOICE. Coming up tonight on Eyewitness News Update, there's a conflicting story between a medical examiner's report and the mother of a murdered six-year-old Macon girl. We'll hear more from the attorney representing Teresa Fargus. The South Macon resident says plans for this property is going to destroy the value of their homes. I'm Raymond Tubb, and I'll have that story. In sports, the Braves sneak by the Mets and the Big Apple, and Bill Powell has his end-of-the-week forecast. Stay with us. Twenty-five hundred hotel franchisees worldwide. What are they doing? The chef calls us outlaws. Steals money from my pocket. My lord sheriff, I will never marry you. That's my wife. Oh, my 
amidst the darkest glades of Sherwood Green, in the deepest part of the wood, some say can still be seen the ghost of Robin Hood. So, did Robin Hood really exist? Do we really want to know, after all, if it were to be proven that he did not exist? And that has never been proven. Who would fight for the underdog? Who would wage war against corruption and tyranny? Who would prove that chivalry is not dead? Robin was not only a celebrity, but also a character of mystery. He lives on in our children and in our children's children. 800 years ago, in a dark forest, in medieval England, there lived a hero. A man so remarkable that his name and his story became a legend. A legend that will live on forever. And tomorrow night, with the premiere of Robin Hood, the Prince of Thieves, Kevin Cosner will be the next to string the bow, ignite our imaginations and continue the legacy. Long live Robin Hood. I'm Pierce Brosnan. Good night. Later tonight, I... CBS Tonight Now, get ready for your local news. Travel to London provided by American Airlines with new non-stop service to London's Heathrow Airport beginning in July.